Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. And got this footage of him with his wife on their swing as he lives right here, right across the street. God, I hope he at least took a shower first. Sick bastard. I'm done here. From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Take me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. up here. Get up. Go. Go, go with him. I love you. I'm so sorry. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Welcome. I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching Cheaters. Allow me to introduce Crystal Laird, a woman who suspects that her boyfriend has a secret life. With red flags on the rise, Crystal places her trust in Cheaters to dig deep. Crystal Laird, age 28, a mental health worker who fears her boyfriend may be losing his mind over another woman. Scott and I met in a club a couple of months ago. I was standing at the bar, I was really bored, and I guess he noticed because he walked over to me and told me I looked bored. We started talking and he asked me to dance. And after we danced, we went and sat at a table and we talked for a while and talked about what we wanted out of life. and. He seemed like somebody I wanted to get to know, so we started dating. In the beginning of the relationship, it was really good. Um, he would call me all the time. I met him every day for lunch. Uh, we never really went to his house. We always came to mine. Uh, we spent pretty much all of our time together. I started to get a little suspicious when we were out at dinner and his phone would ring and he would always get up from the table to talk. He said it was a business, but he's a courier, so I don't see how that would go together. Uh, we always go to my house. He's never invited me to his house. He's never even told me where he lives. He says he doesn't have a home phone. I can only call him on his cell phone. So mainly, it's the little things like that that would make me suspicious. The reason that I think he's hiding where he lives is because I think he has a wife. I think she obviously lives there with him. I think probably he has kids. Um, I think she's the one who calls him when we're out at dinner, and that's why he has to get up from the table. If I find out that Scott has been cheating on me or has a wife and he's been lying to me, it'll be a long time before I can trust anybody ever again. I don't know if I'll ever trust anybody again. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Scott Skipworth, age 44. A security guard suspected of protecting another woman's identity. Investigation day two. Cheater sleuths are geared up and ready for action as they cautiously make their way down a dirt road to a mysterious home, located by tracing a call from the suspect to Crystal. As it turns out, the home is just around the corner from complainant Laird's own residence. After a short while, an unknown woman is observed sweeping the front porch of the mysterious residence. Cheater's PIs are very careful not to jump to any conclusions this early in the investigation and press for more hard evidence. Out of nowhere, the suspect is suddenly seen lumbering toward the front of the house. Cheaters crews back off to avoid unwanted detection. The large cowboy makes his way up the porch stairs to the unknown female, and the two engage in what appears to be a quick kiss on the cheek. Cheaters watchdogs realize that the unknown female could merely be a relative or close family friend and press on for further signs of foul play. 
Investigation Day 7. Unable to enter the premises and finding it difficult to gather any information regarding events inside the house, detectives decide to get proactive, sending an investigator to the front door to do a little undercover work with a hidden camera. Posing as a newspaper salesman, the detective uses his savvy to uncover some interesting facts concerning the case. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. We uh, are offering a complimentary weekend edition of the Dallas Morning News. Okay, well, we're offering it to the man in the house this weekend. Okay. And just thought maybe y'all might be interested. Is your husband here? No, he's not here. What's his name, just in case you're not here? Scott. Scott? Yeah. Well, I'll catch him this weekend, maybe next weekend. Okay. Okay, thank Great. you. Thank you. One hour later, staked out on the road in front of the farmhouse, cheaters' cameras see Ms. Laird's vehicle approaching on the horizon. With suspect Skipworth alone behind the wheel, detectives move into position and clearly spot the two cozied up next to each other on the port swing. Looking like a picture of married bliss, the two cuddle together for quite some time. It is obvious that the suspect is engaging in a pattern of deception as revealed by a phone call to Crystal just hours before. Hey, what are you doing? Busy right in the middle of trying to get this report put together. I'm really kind of busy. Can, can I call you back in just now? Let me finish this report and I'll get right back to you. No, you can't. Look, do you have a wife or girlfriend or something? You always do this. You're already wanting to get off the phone. It, it's not that. I mean, uh, I just I just don't have time right now. I've got to get this done. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll call you back in a little bit. All right. Cheaters' troops, possessing overwhelming evidence of the suspect's mendacity, decide to close the investigation and move to personally verify complainant Laird's suspicions. After the break, the confrontation. Now that the truth about Scott's marriage is out, Cheaters tracks down Crystal to disclose the findings. Crystal's suspicions are well-founded, but nothing can prepare her for the raw images. You were telling me a few minutes ago in the car as we were driving over here that uh, you live a couple exits from here. Yes. Yeah. And you thought it was strange that we were coming out here. Yes. Well, we brought you out here for a couple different reasons. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, um, I have some things I want to show you. See if we can get you up to speed on where we're at with your investigation. Let me take you through the surveillance, show you what I have, and I think you'll find it pretty amazing. On this day of investigation, Detective Gomez tracked the numbers that you gave him to this house. As we watched the house, this unknown female came out and was sweeping. Scott comes walking around the corner. He walks up, communicates with this woman. They go in the house. We needed to find out who this woman was. We couldn't find any marriage certificates on this guy. So our detective posed as working for the newspaper to sell them newspaper subscription. Up to the house? He goes up to the house with a hidden camera. He's talking to her about the newspaper. She said her husband wasn't home right now, but would be home in an hour or two. At that point, we realize that they are married, and he has been lying to you. Obviously, you made a smart move by wanting to know the truth. It's because he lives right here, right across the street. That's the house that I just showed you in the surveillance. Let's go ahead and load up. Get you in the vehicle. Okay, let's take it down. How far up? Take a left right in here, Billy. How far up? Okay, just pull in and park right here. Okay, I'm cutting off. Come up here, Gomez. Excuse me. Hi. 
Can I speak to you for a minute? My name's Tommy Grant from the TV show Cheaters. What's your name? Terry. You live here with your husband, Scott? Scott's your husband? Is Scott's he, my boyfriend. Is he inside? Yes, really. Oh, here's Scott now. Hey, honey. What are you doing here? Did you know he was having an affair with this woman? How are you doing, Scott? I'm Tommy from the TV show Cheaters. Wait, wait, you know this woman? I met her once. What? No, I met him three months ago at a club. No. Yeah. We went to Mardi Gras together. Back off for a Mardi second. Mardi Gras? What did it? They've been wait. dating for the last three months. Here's your little Well, there you go. There's Mardi Gras. What do you have to say, Scott? You drove her around in my car that you had to borrow? Oh, yeah, by the way, this is her that car. That is my car that you've been driving your little wife around in. You told me that was a company car. Give me my keys, by the way. Scott, what do you have to say, buddy? I don't have anything to say. You met me once, but yeah, you have my car. <laughs> and how do you explain this? What's this? Coming up, the conclusion. And how do you explain this? What's this? How long have y'all been married? Four years. Four years. Four years. Four years. Do you have any children? No. So are you really starting up a company, or have you just been lying about that, too? Yeah, was this a business trip in Houston? When we went down to business, we went on down to Galveston. That doesn't look like business to me. I screwed up, but I think it's something that I need to deal with between them. Dude, you, you ain't no dealing anything with me. I just want my car, and I want you to stay out of my life. Is this the guy you married? Is this the guy you... He comes to my house every night and plays with my daughter and tells her all of this wonderful stuff. And then I guess you call him. That's when he goes outside to use the phone. And then comes home to you. God, I hope you at least took a shower first. Sick bastard. I'm done here. You know what? You can take a picture and stick it up. What are you gonna do, Scott? You just, is this your way to get out of the No, it's, it's a whole story that, that y'all don't know anything about. And I'll talk to somebody. Because right now you don't look too good. I don't feel too good. When I met her, yeah, we were What, what bullcrap is he talking now? And I really did fall in love with her when I met her. And unfortunately, I didn't want to give up that easy. But I got in a situation that I thought I was getting out of, and I can't give up that easy, and I got caught between two. And I really did care for you. Uh, you don't know what that means, obviously. The fact is, when you told her, no, I'm not married, there's nobody. When you heard her, open her heart to you and say, Where are you going? Let me ask you one quick question. Three months ago, were y'all split up? You weren't split up? So he's lying to us now here. Of course, he lies about everything, obviously. Well, I'm sorry for what happened, but it was important that you found out the truth as well. I hated to do it this way. You be careful. Where are you going? Oh, uh, I want you out by the time I get home from work tomorrow. Good job. At least she's smart. Well, his lies and stupidity. This is where he, uh... He, my daughter's stuff is, like, all in the back seat there, and she's just sitting there driving around with it. She can drive, too. Well, I think you got what you deserve. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a date. I'm going 
going to meet my police officer now, so I'm not even going to let this affect me. I mean, it will, but not that much, so. After the confrontation, Crystal reclaims her dignity and her car. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheater shares how Crystal's faith and love endures. But now, Cheaters presents Curtis Jackson. Curtis recently appeared on Cheaters, deceiving his girlfriend, Marsha. Curtis Jackson, age 23. Curtis claims weakness of the flesh and offers a somber apology to his ex-girlfriend, Marsha. Well, the first thing I thought when I saw the cameras was, was Cheaters, because I knew I was wrong. But the thing was, you know what I'm saying, I was really still in denial until the whole situation really just hit me. And then I felt like, you know, hey, you know, you made a mistake, you know, you better go ahead and handle it. But, you know what I'm saying, I necessarily didn't handle it the right way. Curtis? Who is this? Who is this? This is chick I just met. Get out the car. I knew this was set up from the start. Hey, you better get that camera out of my face. What you doing? What, what you doing? All right, we ain't finna make no sense. What are you doing? Is, is this getting your business off the ground? Well, the thing that I didn't say that night that I wanted to say specifically was that I was wrong. That was, that was the biggest thing, you know. I just really just threw it out there. And what I should have had been telling her was, hey, I'm wrong. I really apologize. I really didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Because, you know, you really don't do people like that. Because things like that do come back. And, you know, and I really wouldn't wish that on anybody. I really wouldn't. And hurting her feelings really was the last thing that I wanted to do. You know, the first thing that should have came out of my mouth was I apologize. I'm wrong for doing this. I shouldn't be here. That was, should have been the first words came out of my mouth. So keep talking what? I'm going to need security to protect me here. I'm going to need security. No, come on, Marsha. I'm going to need Marcia. security. What? What you say? Oh, you ain't going to lose a week of sleep. You ain't going to lose a week of sleep. You ain't going to lose a week of sleep. You ain't going to lose a week of sleep. You ain't going to lose a week of sleep. You think you're going to clown me? No, you the one doing the clown and you no, in the car. No, 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 no. You in the car get some. You in the car get some. No, you in the car get some. No, in this house. But I'm clowning hey, you. But you in the car get some. In this house. That's what you met three days ago. The main thing that I got out of the situation was that, you know, be straight up with whoever you with. You know, be honest. You know, if you want to see other people, let it be known that you want to see other people. You know, and the thing is that. Weakness of the flesh, that's the biggest thing. Flesh is weak, you know, and I got caught slipping. Thing was, you know, like I said, she kept approaching me, kept approaching me. And then, you know, I said no a couple of times, you know what I'm saying? Then started talking to her, and then, you know, tried to break it off again, and then started right back again. And then the thing was that I got out of it that I really need to just, if I'm gonna be with somebody, I need to be with that person, be open and honest with that person. That's what I should have been in the first place. I shouldn't let somebody come in and wreck the relationship that I did have set. You know, it taught me as far as, you know, hey, if you're going into this monogamy, be monogamous. You know, if you're going to just date other people, just date people, just date. After the emotion-filled confrontation, Crystal Laird stated she'd simply had it with men and will need to take some much-needed time off to learn to trust again. She claims that Scott Skipworth is an expert at manipulating women, and it's just a matter of time before he pays the price for his evil ways. Crystal also replied that Mr. Skipworth will one day have to answer to a higher power when his day of judgment comes. Scott Skipworth reported that Ms. Laird knew exactly what she was getting into when they became romantically involved and totally blames her for not recognizing the true status of their casual relationship. He vehemently denies that their liaison was anything more than a simple roll in the hay. Cheaters investigators made several attempts to make contact with Mr. Skipworth's wife, but she would not return any phone calls. She did, however, relay a message via her husband, saying she believes in the message of the popular country tune, Stand By Your Man, and would do whatever was necessary to save their relationship. For some financial consideration, she was also willing to allow her likeness to be presented on television. 